Father and our God, we thank you for being with us throughout this day and allowing us another opportunity to gather together. We thank you for just how good and how kind and gracious you've been to us. And so as we prepare now to feast on your word, we ask once again that you would take care of those stumbling blocks and those hindrances that get in the way, even if it's self, remove us so that we can clearly hear from you. We ask tonight that you speak to our spirit, and we pray that we will be submissive enough to your word, that when we depart from the, this place, we would have been made better believers. In Jesus' name, we pray and seek your anointing. Let every heart say amen. 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 All right. We got a little bit of ground to cover. I want to remind you this is our uh, second night in looking at a new theme entitled going to the next level and uh, we have used as our base text John chapter 10 verse 10 I focused primarily on 10b uh, and that was where Jesus says I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. As a result of that, on last uh, two Sundays back, we, we focused on setting the stage for what some of the requirements were regarding what Jesus meant in that text and explaining the idea of what abundant men and the concept of prosperity and sharing with you uh, the importance of our place in the kingdom of God, accepting the fact that we cannot park where we are. We ended um, Sunday before last with me sharing with you the first step, the first step, and the first step and going to the next level is your present position is not your final destination. Your present position is not your final destination. That is step one. That's what we're going to focus on on tonight, step one, what I need you to grasp is I want you to get rid of your thinking that wherever you are, that God is satisfied because that takes away from what John 10.10 10 teaches. What John 10.10 10 teaches, and that is the abundance of life, okay? All right, on tonight, we want to look at this uh, first step slightly different, okay? And what I want to share with you is that too many of us as Christians have settled on the level we are on. But there are reasons why. There are many reasons why we have settled on this level. And what I've done, I've broken it down more or less into three or four areas, and that's what we want to focus on. So I'm, I'm aware, but to get us to understand that the level we are on is not the level God wants us to remain on, there are reasons why people get stuck on that level. The very first one is simply because we sometimes don't have, uh, we have an unteachable spirit. An unteachable spirit. This is the first reason why some people are stuck on the level that they are on, all because they do not possess 
a teachable spirit. Let me take you to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. The whole idea is when I say an unteachable spirit, some people refuse instruction. Okay? I want you to listen to what Solomon shares with us. Solomon says, poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction. But he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Now, I want to I take you somewhere in this verse. The King James Version uses the word instruction versus the word correction. So there are times throughout this study I would borrow words from another translation because for some reason it sinks better in our spirit. We grasp it. So the idea is Solomon says in essence something happens to a person who rejects instruction. You got me? But before I tell you what that is, let's talk about what that person is. This is a person, or may I say, these are people who first of all think they know everything. Anybody who rejects instructions on the level that they are on are generally people that you can't tell them anything. They know everything. Or they are people who can't be taught. And they can't be taught because they come in with the attitude, I'm only here to get what I can get for somebody else because I know it. No one can speak into their lives. You ever met people who are on a level and you see that they have the ability or, or the capability, the idea of, of moving up, but you can't speak into their life? They, they just stuck, okay? They have what I call no accountability. Got me? So it's extremely important. Listen to this. If you have an unteachable spirit, you cannot go to the next level. You can learn even from a fool. Are you listening to me? See, if, if, if somebody continues to make stupid, crazy decisions in their lives, you learn not to make those. Even though they are still where? Right there on that level. Now notice in the, in the verse, Solomon tells us the results of an unteachable spirit. Solomon says that the person <clears throat> who possesses an unteachable spirit ends up in poverty. Woo! And that's, that's generally true because if you can't get a person to understand what to do on that level that they are living on, they, they, they can't accomplish nothing at work to move up. Remember some of the things I was saying this morning? To move up to the next level. Listen to what this writer says. He says, more people would learn from their mistakes if they weren't so busy denying that they made them. When you look back over your life, all of us in here realize that when we were much, much younger, we did some stupid things, but you didn't stay there. You, you, you approach life now so different. So the reason why is because we must avoid poverty. And poverty is not just a lack of stuff. 
Some people are in poverty spiritually. Okay? Another, another writer simply says, it is impossible for a man to learn that which he thinks he already knows. You'd be surprised how many people come to church and they, they, they honestly think they come to get information to take back to somebody else. And what they have allowed is the word to go completely over their head. When the whole time they were present, the Lord is speaking to them and they're trying to jot down notes for somebody else. <laughs> so if you want to go to the next level, it is imperative that a person develops a teachable spirit. I, I need you to hear me clearly. Many of our members are going to stay where they are. They're going to come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And they cannot figure out why their lives are the way it is. And it's all because they don't understand the value of having a teachable spirit. See, it's more than just hearing the word. You got to receive what you hear. See, some folk good at hearing and can tell you, I heard everything you said, Pastor. Hearing is just a step. You got to believe. You got to receive that thing. And then make sure it is planted within your spirit to carry out the task. So you must be willing to learn more about God's word. Does everybody hear me? How can you know to do better when you don't know what better is? There's another area of, of individuals not having a teachable spirit. They have an unteachable spirit. And that is an area that this area I'm about to present traps us. It's because of a spirit of unforgiveness. I need you to hear me now. When we refuse to forgive, the Bible teaches us that we should forgive others, not for their sake, but for our own sake. Okay? Many of y'all have heard me mention this. There are people, right to this day, mad as all get up with dead folk. I want y'all to hear me now. Dead people. You can't do anything about that person. That person is dead and gone. But there is power in the cemetery. Can I tell you where, what, it, what I'm teaching? The power in the cemetery is that dead people have the power to hold you hostage. And you have to get to that point. I can easily teach this because Satan wanted me to have an unforgiving spirit with my daddy. I mean, when you see your own daddy jump on your mama, it, it, it baffles your mind. It's, it ain't something you just quickly go in a room and come out and overcome. It, it, it messes with you in your thinking because there are moments, you, I don't care who you are, if you ain't never been around a drunk, don't talk back to me because you don't understand. But if you've been around one, you don't tell me you ain't had a moment where you felt like killing somebody. It has crossed your mind. Are you hearing me? And if you ain't careful and let that seed continue to grow, you'll get there. And you'll find yourself doing just as much back to them as they are doing to you. Whew. Forgiveness has a unique way. And I want you to listen to this. Forgiveness releases you from bondage. You can't go to the next level holding grudges. 
Am I, does everybody understand what I'm saying? See, you, you got to have a clear passageway in your relationship with God from here to heaven. And, and you can't let folk get in the way and block you. Even the word says that when husband and wife are not on the same page, it hinders the prayer life. So if you even single and holding, uh, you know, animosity against a person that you want to go and dig up and beat the corpse, you in serious trouble. And we've all been there. Oh, boy, y'all. I, I want to share with you a statement in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. The Bible says... That Jesus came, I mean, Peter came to Jesus and said this to him. He said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Listen to what Jesus said. I do not say to you up to seven times but up to 70 times 7. When you really read that, you think Jesus misunderstood Peter. Because you have to ask yourself the question, you telling me how many times I got to forgive, but you ain't saying much about what the person has done to cause me to forgive them. That is irrelevant. Why are y'all looking at me? L li listen to this statement. An unforgiving spirit is the devil's playground. And before long, it becomes the Christian's battleground. If you want to go to the next level, you got to learn how to forgive. And not allow yourself to be held hostage to another person's mistakes. Does everybody hear me? Gotta move up. You gotta take off. You gotta go. So how can you ever expect to be forgiven when you don't want to forgive nobody else? Am I, does everybody hear me? So when we talk about an unteachable spirit, a person who can't be taught is going to stay on this level. You're going to stay here. When, when nobody can teach you nothing, you're going to stay right there. And I think everybody sitting in here got some, if it ain't us, we got them in our family. You can, you can t tell them over and over the same thing. And it's like you're talking to a wall. Because they have an un teachable spirit so one of the reasons why people are stuck on the level that they are on in life you can't teach them anything are you together there's a second reason why some people can't go to the next level in life one word laziness Laziness. Okay? Listen to this. A lazy person aims at nothing and generally hits it. Okay? Okay? Now listen, listen. Many people have gotten comfortable on the level that they are on because they have developed a spirit of laziness. And Satan loves this. Satan, Satan enjoys when people get to a point they're just too lazy to actually get up and do required things to get them to the next level. And I'm not, I'm not meddling. Our folk are good at it. We want what the next level provides, but we don't want to do what it takes to get up there. If somebody could just drop by and, and, and put it in my lap, 
fine. But if I got to do anything to get up there, I'm lazy. Once again, I want to talk or share with you some information from Solomon's writings out of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 33 and 34. I want you to listen to what he says. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Now let me, let me tell you what the verse is not teaching. The verse is not teaching us that one should sit back and wait for God to do everything for you. I want you to hear me now. You know, I have a real serious problem when I'm teaching this kind of stuff because I worked early in life. So it's hard for me to relate to somebody who, who doesn't understand that you don't have to stay on the level you are on all because you wait on God to do something. I'm praying for a job. Okay, pray. But get your behind up and go fill out some applications. Do y'all hear what I'm teaching? Don't, don't sit back and tell me I'm waiting on God. How's God going to open my door? And you have done absolutely nothing. So this verse is not teaching us that God's supposed to drop by the house and drop it in your lap. God is not going to do everything for you. He's not going to pour out blessings and all you got to do is just wait on it to come. It's not going to happen like that. And that's, that's what bothers me about this generation. That's the missing link. Something as adults we forgot to give to these young folk today. We didn't want them to catch the hell we caught, but we gave them too much. Boy, y'all done got quiet on me. They, they got too much, so they missed something in the process. Now the mentality, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, you know, I've been in church. God's supposed to do something. God ain't excited because you walk through his doors. James chapter 2, verse 18. Listen to what James tells us. James says, but someone will say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. If a person desires to go to the next level, one must be a doer of the word. You can't be lazy. You got to be a doer of the word. Well, I, I didn't know I was going to have to work this hard to get to the next level. Well, then don't go. Don't go. Because, see, God is not going to take you the easy way to the next level. Sometimes it's a struggle to get to the next level. But once you get there, you know you get, got there not by your own works, but by being obedient to the word of God. Am I making sense to you? You got to be a doer of the word. Okay? Don't, don't talk to me about going to the next level and, 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 and you late 90% going to work for a month. Come on now. That's not going to get you nowhere. Because first of all, you, you haven't even developed good work habits. So how is God going to bless you and, and, and you? Well, I, I, I'll be honest. I can find more, more fault with what I'm doing. I just, I, don't, I just don't like the job. Sometimes it's best. And I want you to listen. I, I call pure hell working at that publishing board was blamed for stuff that I didn't do. Uh, suspended from the job and still had to go to work. But guess what God did? God worked it out. When he looked up and saw me still at work, he said, well, he that crazy, I need to go ahead and pay him. I mean, y'all have to understand what I'm trying to teach. See, you don't let nothing interfere with what you are required to do under whatever the condition is. I mean, I'm amazed at how people quit jobs now. 
because you got mad with the boss. What's wrong with you? Come on here now. You have to think before you walk out the door. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Once, once you become a doer of that word, you, you, you got to understand, you got to activate that word in your life. God will take you to the next level. Have you ever thought that you were planted in a position just so God could work on you? So when you get to the next level, you will know that it was God that brought you there, not you. Because see, if you had a hellish boss once you got here, and you were once down here, you appreciate being right here. And you will think twice before you walk around with a bigoted attitude. You hold your head down because you know you didn't get there on your own. Because there were moments you felt like what? Quitting, walking out of the door. Listen to this statement. A lazy person who sits back and do nothing but dream will eventually wake up to a nightmare. Do you hear me? I, I, you, you ever been around folk been dreaming for a long time? And that's all they do is dream. They, you know, I want that. I, I want to get me one of them. I, I dream I'm going to be in that. Come on now. It's all right to dream, but don't dream too long. See, when you're lazy, that's all you, you're content. You're just content dreaming. Why, why, why is this so important? I'm going to take you once again. Listen, listen to what Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. Listen to what he says. For a dream comes through much activity. And a fool's voice is known by his many words. The idea is you can't just talk about your dreams. You must put forth an effort and put the dream into action. I mean, you can sit back all day long and want something, but what are you doing to get it? You know, I'm, I, 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 I want one day be in my house just like you. Fine. It's called work. See, and here's the problem. People look at where you are and they don't understand your experience. All they're looking at is, is, is the finished product. You know, when we were little, I don't know what y'all did when in y'all neighborhood. We, we stayed outside. Because we, uh, us didn't have no computers. We, we didn't have computers. We played outside. And we used to sit on the steps and play choosing cars. You pick a number, and that car came down the street, that would be your car, because that was the first car. And whoever picked number two, that would be their car. And, and how much if it was a raggedy car, we just fall out laughing at, that's your car, look at that, look at that, look at that. But that's what we did when we were small. But now that you've grown up, you, you realize you, you can't stay on the steps. And keep picking numbers. You've grown up now. You said now God has put me on a level where I don't have to pick. I can actually go in buy. Yeah, yeah. Boy, y'all. Yes, you can't. You got to put forth an effort. Then there is number, number, number one. People who have an unteachable spirit are the reason why they're where. On the level that they're on. Laziness is the second reason why so many Christians are on the level that they're on. You know, they, they're just lazy. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with helping folk. But don't keep helping me because you keep you causing me to stay on the level. If you just gonna keep feeding me a hamburger. And not teaching me that I need to get a job, I never buy me a package of burgers. Am I making sense to y'all? But there's a third reason why many Christians are on the level of their own. It's called ignorance. May not set well with us. The Bible tells us what happens to us 
without knowledge. Are you listening to me? Without knowledge. People, people don't understand that this is critical. God does not bless ignorance. And I'm not trying to be funny. Our folk are just as content in the lane of ignorance. I'm going to prove it. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Listen to what he says. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Boy, Sister Paul, Back it back up. I, I want to show everybody something. Because when, when, when you don't, when you just read a text and, and just scan it, it, it messes with you. But when you get into what the text is actually saying, it blows your mind. Now, notice what the text says. We are destroyed by, watch this now, not a lack of education. Don't read into that what's not there. He didn't say education. He said knowledge. <coughs> Poor y'all. Yeah. What, wh why, what is he talking about when he says knowledge? He's talking about an in-depth study of this. Because heaven is going to be crowded with some folk you didn't think were going to be there. Hello, y'all. I'm not knocking education. Please understand it, young folk. Get, some, get all the sense you can get, but don't confuse it. Because you got a degree does not qualify you spiritually. And see, us done got that confused. If you're not careful, education will make a pure jackass out of you if you don't know how to handle the sense. Because you would actually walk around with the attitude that I'm different, I'm better, I qualify wrong. You don't go to heaven because you got a BA degree from Harvard or Yale. Or doctorate. No, 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 no. No. He says, my people are destroyed for a what? Lack of knowledge. We're, we're being destroyed on the level we are on because we don't understand prayer. <laughs> we don't understand living out the truth of God as it is revealed in our lives. So we just stuck. Stuck right here. Stuck right here. And please, y'all, I, I have to say this over and over again. You got to be careful with, with education. Whatever you learn, put it into action, but don't wear it. Be careful now. Don't, don't wear it because if, if you wear it in a manner that you are untouchable, you have no use to God. All right. Listen to this. Ignorance is not the real problem. It's not knowing we are ignorant that causes the difficulty. You hear me? We think we have arrived. Okay? And God's desire is to take us higher spiritually and we honestly think I'm there 
we've learned two words more than we knew 10 years ago. And now we, we've arrived. There's no need to study the word. There's no, no need for me to have a thirst or hunger to be taught the word of God. You can't reach me because I don't know I'm ignorant. Boy, y'all done got quiet on me. Now, Sister Paul, and, 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 and I know I'm, I'm creating a problem, but I want you to back it back to Hosea. What, 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 what? Stay on your level. Uh, give, me, give, me Ho, give me Hosea 4 and 6. All right. <laughs> ah. No, I got it covered, Doc. I got it covered. Third. 36 years, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from Deacon Everhard. Since Everhard, I got, I got it covered. <laughs> All right, I want to show you something. I want, I want to show you something in this text. And it, when I really, you know, looked at it, I was like, wait just a minute. This, this thing is, is real. Notice the first two words. Y'all missed it. I can tell y'all missed it. I didn't think they caught it. Okay? Notice it is God's people that are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, not the sinner. We talking about folk who go to church every Sunday. Boy, yeah. People who say, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. We talking about uh, Bible totals and scripture quotas. That's what he's talking about, my people. See, he, he's, he's never granted uh, ownership of all of mankind. He's only the father of those who accept him as their personal Lord and Savior. So the text says, my people. Oh, boy, y'all. Do, do you see it in the text? People can't receive deliverance and healing if they don't know that God wants them delivered or healed. Boy, y'all. Do you understand what I'm saying? P people live on the level they are on content because they hang around people who are satisfied being sick on that level. And the reason they got content on the level being the way they are is because somebody told them it will God will for you to be like that. So ain't no need trying to get it any better. Just, just honey child, just, just live with it and go on. Come on, come on now. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. You, you, you got the wrong whole idea. God wants you blessed. It's what I do on the level I'm on with what I'm dealing with. There's a difference in accepting being a diabetic and being stupid as a diabetic on the level I'm on. So since, since, since this is God's will, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, Cheryl, before we get home, let's just stop and I'm going to at least get me four pieces of fried chicken. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm thirsty and that water just ain't getting it. I need me a good cold coat and I want a 16 ounce. I want me a 16 ounce now and get me two rolls while you're in there because I'm just, you know, come on now. I'm trying to teach us something. It's what you do on the level you're on. If, if this is what they say I got, I'm going to fight like hell to make it better with the level I'm on. Am I making any sense to anybody? It, at least if, if, if I'm going to go out on the level, I'm going out fighting. <sighs> you can take me back to where I'm supposed to be, Sister Paul. A couple of slides up after that. That next quote. It may be true. You see it? Listen to this. It may be true that to err is human. But to remain in error is stupid. I want y'all to hear me now. It, it's, see, see. I, whew, whew. You got me once. 
that was by surprise. You get me twice, that's on me. Am I making sense to what I'm trying to teach us? See, you, you don't have to stay on that level and keep making mistake after mistake after mistake. If you want to go to the next level, you got to pursue God's word. There's no other map to take you there. And please understand, don't, don't get confused. I'm not teaching attendance. There, there are some people that, that don't miss no more than two Sundays out of the year from church somewhere. But they ain't in the Word. They just at church. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, if we're going to get rid of ignorance, we got to pursue that which can replace it. And then when, when, you, when you move out of the arena, I, I told y'all, when, and this is the only way I can get, get us to get it. I don't hang around preachers that don't understand the level I'm on. Y'all understand? Because I can't run with a preacher who been at a church 20 years and don't understand the difference between you walked into what you got. I started this. So there's a total different arena. Boy, y'all. Do, do y'all hear what I'm saying? I even told New Horizon, be careful. And God carried us straight through it. I said, there are going to be people that got on board with us at the very beginning. God said, they ain't going to last. Because they joined out of excitement, something new. Then they got off board. Then the moment God blessed with this, you got folk who walk by what they see. So they said, oh, they, they look like they really about some business. I need to join. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't want me to say this kind of stuff. I just have to keep it real. So what they did, they, they got on board. And they saw, they, they saw they, oh, they got something. They're they doing this. That's fine. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. That's really, really nice. Holy Spirit said, ain't going to last long. You know, y'all looking at me like, I just got to teach the way the Holy Spirit gives it to me. What I'm trying to get us to understand, the issue of ignorance. Got to be careful we don't breed it. Are you with me? If you're not willing to see to go to the next level, get off. I'm not trying to be funny. Don't none of y'all need to hang with nobody who can't see with you on where you're trying to go. Because if they can't see, they need to get off board with you. I mean, why are you going to hang with somebody and they're not even willing to grab hold of your dream and say you can do it? I, I don't understand it. And we run with them kind of negative folk. They ain't, they ain't even on the level you on. And you like that with them. I ain't trying to be funny. I, I, I have to hang with people that can see. Because see, I talk crazy talk. Are y'all ready? See, I don't see East Lake like y'all do. I don't see East Lake. What, what I see over here is commercial. Because one day, it ain't going to be long. Watch what I tell y'all. They're going to tear that there down. And the man going to come looking. Because they ain't going to put nothing down there and leave us here. Because when them white folk get off the exit, they got to at least make the right turn, the wrong turn, honestly, and feel safe. I ain't trying to be funny. I'm trying to show you something. So you got to understand, we ain't just over here just to be over here. There's something God got up his sleeve. So we got to do right where we are to get to the next level. The moment it changes, you're going to have some folk get on board. But they can't get on board because we are in the hood. 
I'm just telling it up front. We're in the hood, but I don't see us in the hood. I see us as the church in the hood that'll do you some good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So many Christians, many Christians, many Christians are on the level that we are on because one, we have an unteachable what? Spirit. Number two, we have a spirit of laziness. And number three, we have a spirit of ignorance. Okay? And, and you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot go to the next level with your heart being closed. Are you hearing me? If I could only, ooh. share with you how many times I've sat at my desk and the Holy Spirit will speak to me and say, boy, you were wrong. You out of order. Don't, don't do that. And I said, what? But I, he had to break me. He had to reach inside of me. But what I had to tell him, teach me, show me, guide me. Because what one preacher does at another church, I can't do. I can't do. You, you've been where you are 20 years. Fine, bro. Go on. Number two, won't finish this one tonight, but the second step in going to the next level is that it's something that a Christian must know, okay? And look at what is on the screen, that God wants to take you to the next level. God wants to take you to the next level. God wants to take you to the next level. Now you might say, what does that have to do with going to the next level? You'd be surprised how many folk lie on God. Lie on God. Well, I, I done prayed four times and, and God ain't done nothing to I, I'm just, I learn, honey, just learn, be content. <laughs> just, just be satisfied, be thankful. Get, just, nope, listen to what I want to show you. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 33, verse 11. He says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Three things I want to show you that's sown in that verse. First one is God does not change his purpose. Are y'all listening to me? Can I tell you what I mean? If God has a purpose for your life. Negroes can't change it. The enemy can't change it. Before God allow a person to dibble dabble in his purpose for your life, he going to do one or the other. He either going to move the Negro or move you. Do y'all hear me? See, probably next Sunday night, we're going to talk a lot about purpose because you need to know God did not accidentally drop you on that level you're on. You're on that level because he got a higher purpose, but your purpose is seen on the level you're on. You just can't accomplish it on the level. <sighs> Second thing that is found in the text is that his command is not frustrated. God does not get weak and weary. All right now. If he tells you he got something in store, it's yours. All right, all right. Well, I'm, y'all, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all. I know you get tired of me saying it, but that's the only thing I got to go on. Right. You got to start. Understanding if God tells you something, stand on it. Stand on it. 
Stop walking around talking about oh, what y'all think. It ain't about what other folk think. If he said it, it's yours. All you got to do is stand on it. Stand. That's all. You got to trust him. But you got to carry out your part. I told you, when, when they promised me the, 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 the position at the publishing board, I was to be chief editor. Chief editor. I didn't move as fast as they wanted, but had sent the letter accepting the job. Everything was fine. Then when they called, sent, sent the letter back, said, we still want you to come, but that position we went ahead and filled. Okay? I looked at my wife. I said, well, I, I can't go back to the church. I'm going on. I said, so whatever they got to offer, Holy Spirit said, just go. Just go. So I get there. Changing salary, everything. Position now is over Christian education. Love the position, it just didn't pay what the other position paid. So I took it. Took it. Didn't have no office, was in an office with another person, and I'm in a corner somewhere. But show you how God will elevate you out of a corner. Boy, y'all still ain't getting it. I'm in the corner. And then they come up and say, here's what you got to do. I said, what, 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 what is it? He said, well, this is a big man saying, well, your job now is to develop the vacation Bible school kit to improve the Sunday school material, to improve the uh, Baptist training union material, and, and above all, you over the commentary. And I'm going, I ain't trying to be funny, but I, and my spirit said, y'all don't pay that kind of money for all that you asking me to do. But y'all got to remember now, I had to accept what was given to me. And the Holy Spirit said, now here's what I want you to do. Shut your mouth, don't grumble, don't complain, just follow my lead. Now I'm in a corner, no office. I ain't got no office, ain't got no office. Just in a little corner in a room. And the big man would come by and say, you got the vacation Bible school material prepared? I said, yes, I said, oh. He said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you just come to the meeting tomorrow and present it? I said, okay. I said, let me ask you something. Is, is it all right that I don't present just one? He said, what, what do you mean? I said, I got about three or four already. He, he said, huh? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, man, bring them on. Br bring it on. So I, I go to the meeting and I present it. And, and they all sitting there and the boss said, oh, I like all this. I don't, I don't, I don't, ooh, I don't know what one I want to get right now. All this at night. Holy Spirit said, keep it cool. Don't say nothing. Just keep carrying on your work. All of a sudden, he moves me from there to a little office. No, wasn't much bigger. Just enough to put another foot in. But, but I kept doing the job. So I'm trying to show you something. I kept doing the job with dignity and grace. And then all of a sudden the boss said, uh, I want you to come downstairs to the meeting. I go downstairs to the meeting and there are big dignitaries sitting there. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know these people. I mean, he said, no, Holy Spirit said, now here's what I want you to do. Walk in, right. sit down, speak to everybody. Hold your head up. No, ain't nobody got to know you ain't got nothing. <laughs> see, y'all, I'm serious. See, I can't teach this unless I've been there. And I had to sit beside dignitaries. Yeah. And I'm going, ooh, ooh. And then the Lord said, they ain't no different from you. Right. They ain't no different, bro. It, you, you're going to be surprised how ignorant they are. They just learned two words you don't know yet. All, that's all I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you. And then all of a sudden, God grabbed hold of things. And I pulled up at work one day and he said, I want to tell you something. That's going to be your parking space right there. I said, what? He said, you're going to park right next to the president's CEO. I said, huh? He said, don't shut up now. I got this. I got it. He moved me there. Now, I want to show you, I jumped over what they didn't give me to the top position that I wasn't even expecting. Y'all ain't getting it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, God will make your enemies your footstool. In fact, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. But you got to do your part. All right. God wants to take you. Third and final point out of Psalm 33 is this. 
his design for your life will be accomplished. You hearing me? Whatever God says he's going to do, he's going to do it. Stop trying to worry about how you're going to get it done. Your job is to be a vessel. That's all you got to do. That's why this morning I was so busy trying to get this young folk to understand. You might be at the bottom now, but if you do right, God will bring you up here. But you can't walk in the door. Lord have mercy. What an attitude. I ain't going to do that. You can't be like that. Not and go to the next what? Level. You're going to the next level, you're going to be able to tell somebody, I used to mop. I used to clean the toilet. I used to wash dishes. I used to clean off the tables. But now, I'm over everybody. All right. So, Mr. Paul put a P in there. Uh, I tell you what, let, let me end on this, Miss Paul. Can you pull up the quote? I want to end on that quote. Right there. Listen to this. What God has prepared for us children can be accomplished if we obey God and His will. God will take you to the next level, but you got to be obedient. I could imagine a lot of mornings getting up, you didn't want to go to work. I mean, I don't understand young folk thinking you just went skipping and happy and yeah, I just so glad to be there. Ain't, no, ain't nobody glad to have to get up and go to work. But what you learn to do is to do what you gotta do to survive. 